Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing part two of ways that my family saves money. Now again, some of these may not apply to you. They may not work for you. You may not have the um, access to some of these things I'm about to show you and that's okay. You do what is best for you. I'm just hopeful that maybe somewhere somebody might find something that they can take from this video to help them with their budget and um, shrink the money that is leaving their bank account and maybe hold some of it in. Um, this time we do not have 20. Um, if you saw my other video, it was 20 ways that my family saves money. If you haven't seen it yet, I will link it down below in the description. This time we have um, 17 and then at the end, stay tuned to the end, I have a special challenge for you. So we're just going to jump right into it. I've already given you my disclaimer. These may or may not work for your family. This is just simply what we do here. Okay. So number one way, um, we try to refurbish furniture. If there's nothing wrong with it, if it's not broken, then we try to reuse it or... Um, refinish it if we can. I have done um, a dresser. It's actually a chest of drawers. I will put a picture in it here, of a, a picture here of it. It was my grandmother, my mother's grandmother's, I think. I'll have to clarify. I know it's, I'm the fifth generation. I remember that, but it's late and we're trying to leave town tomorrow. My brain isn't actually working right now. Um, so yeah, I refinished it. It had three coats of paint on it over all the generations. I took some paint stripper. I stripped it all the way down to the natural wood. I had bought um, some stain and I was going to stain it. But when I saw what the natural lo wood looked like, I really loved it. So all I did was clean it up really good and sand it. And I just sealed it really good. And it's now in my dining room and it is being used as storage because it has the drawers and it is my coffee bar. It's really cute. It's the perfect size. I love it. And it's special because it was passed down generation to generation through my family. It's an antique. It's over 100 years old. So that was one thing we did. Um, Jason actually built a headboard for us. It's not this one. This was our old headboard. This is a queen, a full or a queen. We have a king size and I knew what I wanted. I sketched it out on a piece of paper and he went to Lowe's and got the lumber and he built it and we helped him and we sanded it down, stained it, painted it, and then he added lights to it. I'll put a picture of that as well. I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of him for doing it because he really didn't think that he could and he built it and it's gorgeous and I love it. And then I am in the process right now of stripping down my kitchen table. I'm sure you've seen it in other videos like grocery hauls. It was white. I had chalk painted it white um, and the chairs. And it has just started over time just being loved and used every day. The paint is chipping off. So I'm in the process now of stripping all of that off. And I'm going to stain the tabletop and then the seats of the chairs. And then I'm going to paint the table legs, the chair backs and the chair legs, a dark sort of charcoal-y, almost black, but it's gray. Um, and then it's gonna be like butcher block tabletop. Um, so I'm in the process of that. So instead of throwing out old furniture or going to buy brand new furniture, such as our headboard, we try to just work with what we've got and either build it if we can like the headboard um it ended up costing i think 200 dollars by the time he bought the wood and the screws sandpaper stain seal and the lights that he put on it i think he spent between 200 and 250 and it's solid wood you can't buy a king size headboard for 250 dollars, and it's special because he made it so we refurbish furniture as often as we can if we can if it's sal salvageable Okay, the second thing we do to save money is we mow our own yarn and we do our own landscaping. And if you come to my house, you will know that if you look at my flower beds because we are not flower bed people. Um, Jason's parents are great at that. that he ha They have a real talent for that and their yard is amazing. It's beautiful. But I don't have a green thumb. I struggle to keep plants alive and I'm constantly calling my mother-in-law saying, what is wrong with this plant? What did I do to it? How do I save it? I don't know what to do. 
and plants just die. But I'm so proud of myself. I bought a hydrangea last year. I planted it in the flower bed and it bloomed this year. And my lily came back this year and they gave us a crepe myrtle and it's going strong. So we just go out there and just work hard and Jason mows the yard and Colson is about to have a fit to please learn how to mow the yard. So in a couple of years, he'll get to start learning that too. So that saves us a lot of money because if you've priced just, just a yard cutting alone um, is like anywhere between 50 to to $100 for one time. If you like to pay a landscaper, I am not judging you. If you don't do any of these things, I am not judging you. This is just simply what we do to save money, okay? Number three, we fix things, if at all possible, when they break, um, instead of just saying, oh, well, it's broken and toss it and go buy a new one. This is another thing that I'm really super proud of Jason for. Uh, when we got married, he didn't really have a knowledge of how to fix things or how to build things. He really has tried hard to learn to fix something or install something. The ceiling fan in here, you can't see, but he installed it himself. Um, and he never ever would have thought to even try that uh, on his own and not pay someone to do that when we first got married. He will try to fix the car. My dad is really knowledgeable about fixing things, installing things. So Jason has gotten to where he will try it first and if he get, feels like he's in over his head or he doesn't know the answer to a question, he has no problem calling or FaceTiming my daddy and say, help me, what do I do? What did I do wrong? Before I get myself in trouble, what should I do? And he will walk him through it. And I know my dad and my mom both are super proud of him for doing much better with trying to fix things. So, and it has, it has saved us a lot of money because we're not buying something new and we're not paying someone else to come in and fix it. Unless it's something like, you have to have a licensed person like for electrical work or a plumber some we've we have major major pro plumbing problems in this house we don't know why we didn't build this house we are not the original owners um that's why in my mopping video you probably saw me pour the mop water down my kitchen sink instead of in the toilet because here's why this is for you, all of you who want to know why did I put it in the in the kitchen sink. I will not pour it down the toilet simply because it takes nothing, I mean nothing, to stop these toilets up. It is so incredibly aggravating. We don't know why. We have had to call a plumber, which costs money, a lot of money. And they have told us that it is probably whoever built this house plumbed this house incorrectly and it doesn't show up on inspection. So the only way to really do that, since the plumbing is in the foundation, is to bust up the foundation. Well, we don't have that kind of money, and so we're just gonna be really gentle with the toilets and try not to stop them up. So I'm not pouring anything down the toilets that doesn't belong in the toilets. Um, we probably have Jason unstop a toilet at least, at least three times a week around here. It's ridiculous. And I don't pour it outside because it's going to make the dog sick and I'm not making her sick. We already have trouble with her tummy as it is and the dog before her has passed away and she got extremely sick with pancreatitis for licking something outside when we had scrubbed the patio with some Dawn dishwashing liquid and vinegar and it made her sick. She had pancreatitis and that was awful. And then she did end up passing away before her first birthday. And now we have Willow. I'm not pouring anything like that outside and risking her getting sick. Plus the neighbor on this side has three dogs. And my neighbor on the other side has a dog and the neighbor on his side has two dogs and we are on a slope this way. So if I pour water out there, not only is it going to make our dog sick, it's going to make his dog sick and their dog sick. And I'm not doing that. So it's my kitchen sink or don't mop, unfortunately. If we lived out in the country, I would find a back corner of our property somewhere and send a child out there with my mop bucket and say, go pour it out out there where the, she can't get to it. And that's where my mop water would go. However, I don't have that option. Okay, now that I've answered those questions, number four way we spend, save money is I try to make our own gifts if I can, and not just to save money, but just because it's special. Um, when Jason's parents moved from here to go down to, they live in Gulf Shores now, 
they pulled everything out of their attic, you know, leaving, moving, and she had saved every single ball jersey or um, baseball, basketball t-shirt, um, cheerleading uniforms, dresses of his sister when she was younger. We snuck that box of all those keepsake clothings into my car and I made her a quilt and gave it to her and now she has she can display all those memories in this quilt also made my mom a quilt we took pictures um different like their wedding picture our wedding picture my sister's wedding picture the grandkids pictures pictures of her parents his parents and we printed them on fabric and i made her a quilt as well for christmas one year she boo-hooed and cried and sobbed. Wreaths for front doors. I made my great aunt a little flower pot this year for her birthday. Painted it a flesh color, put googly eyes on it, wrapped um, yarn around the foam, pink foam rollers and glued it around the pot and then put eyelashes on it and made it like a little old lady <laughs> and put glasses. I got glasses from the dollar store and put on it with little ear and then hot glued everything on and put a plant in it to be the hair and she had a fit over it. So just little things like that. We make gifts. Um, hopefully those people who love, who received those gifts felt the love that we put into them when making them, but it also didn't cost us an arm and a leg like things cost now. Um, number five, haircuts. I cut the boys' hair. I say boys like they're children, but it's just Jason, my husband, and Colson, our son. I get the clippers, just a wall. I think they're wall brand um, clippers. Put a guard on them and sit them in the chair and buzz their hair. Both of them have thick hair. Both of them, their hair grows so fast. Within a week and a half, they both need a haircut again. So I just buzz their hair and be done with it. And then Bailey and I go... Right here in town, there is a girl who cuts our hair and it, she charges $10. That's it. You cannot go to like a Supercuts or a Great Clips or whatever those are and get it for $10. She's fast. She's as sweet as she can be. She won't let you leave until you, you are completely satisfied and she charges $10. And I am in and out of there from the time I walk in the door to the time I walk out in 15 minutes. Um... Along those same kind of lines, number six is we don't go to the nail salons. I used to when I was a teenager and when we were first married, I would go and have the acrylic tips, but it just is an unnecessary expense to me. Um, I do keep them filed, they stay clean. And as much as I'm cooking and cleaning and scrubbing in the kitchen, it's just pointless to put polish on them. So I just, unless we're going to a wedding or something special, I typically don't polish my fingernails. I will polish my toenails in the summer when I'm wearing sandals and things, I actually need to go do that now before we leave town tomorrow. But we don't go to the nail salon unless it's just a rare special occasion. Like if I was in a wedding and all the bridesmaids were going to have matching manicures, then I would go do it then for that purpose, but not on a regular basis. Uh, number seven, Christmas decorations. We don't buy live Christmas trees. We have an artificial Christmas tree that was actually given to us by my uncle. He did not want his anymore. He had gotten a new one and he didn't want this one. It was a little too big for his house. So when we moved into this house and we had really, really tall ceilings in the living room, he told me to come get that Christmas tree. So we have a Christmas tree that was given to us and we use it every year. The lights are starting to go out on it. So if we can't get the lights to work this year, then we may have to be buying a new one but we don't go buy a, a Christmas tree every single year. We use the same one. Number eight, we get our meats from the local meat packer here in town. In fact, Jason just went and grabbed some of their breakfast sausage because they were running a sale for Father's Day this week. So um, the breakfast sausage was $1.99 a pound. Well, the Kroger brand is $2.99 a pound on sale. So he came home with 10 pounds they just do it in bulk. They just measure out how much you want, put it in a bag, and that's how they sell it to you. So when he brings the meat home, whether it's the sausage or the ground beef, we have to get my kitchen scale out and kind of weigh it out, portion it out how much I want in proportion, put it in freezer bags, and stick it in the, fr in the freezer. We just actually finished doing that with the sausage just a minute ago. Their ground beef is $3.79 a pound, whereas at Kroger it's $6 or more. Last time I looked at it, it was $6 like a month ago, so it's probably more than that now. So that saves a lot as well. 
Um, number nine, we eat leftovers a lot. And when I say a lot, I say at least twice a week. I will cook like two nights in a row and then there's leftovers from both of those meals. So the third night we just eat the leftovers because there's not enough leftovers from one meal to feed all of us. So it's usually enough leftovers for one or two of us the first night and then the same the second night there's one or two of us could eat the leftovers. So the third night, half of us eat the first night's leftovers, half of us eat the second night's leftovers and get rid of that food. I just don't see a reason to throw all that food in the trash when it's perfectly good food and that will feed us dinner for a night. Let's see what else here. Uh, number 10, we use our local library a lot, especially with being homeschoolers. It's really beneficial. Uh, not only can you get check out books for free, you can also check out DVDs. You can download free ebooks or audiobooks and streaming, or at least my local library does. Look at your local library and see what they offer. Um, they also um, offer like their computer. So if you don't have internet at home or you don't want to pay for internet at home and you don't mind going to the library, if you just need to like check your email real quick every day or every two or three days, whatever it is that you're wanting to use on the internet, if you just want to check your social media, you can go in the library and use theirs and not have to pay for internet at home if that was something you needed to do. Um, they also, ours also offers like a bunch of online classes. So you can go online and take a Spanish class or um, any foreign language. I think there's cooking classes, they told me, um, like how to fix different things. I don't know what all there is, but they told me it's like all, it's just a ton of different classes that you can take, which is amazing. Um, I think there's ancestry stuff that you can use on their online. So as long go get a library card at your local library if you don't already have one. If you do, I highly recommend you check it out because it's a huge resource. Whether you're a homeschooler, whether you're a college student, or you're not in school at all, or you don't have any kids in school, there's a whole bunch that you could use the library for that might would save you a lot of money. Number 11 is going to be coupon codes. We use coupon codes as much as I, as possible. If we're going online shopping, I always look. You can Google coupon codes for and fill in the blank, whatever it is that you're um, shopping, whether it's um, Amazon or Target or Lowe's or some subscription to something, whatever it is that you're online shopping for, just Google really quick coupon code for and see if there's any that pop up. I know also if you have credit cards, which we don't, there's a couple of the credit card companies that also offer that service to where when you're online shopping with their credit and you use their credit card, it automatically searches for those. So that's big. I mean, you can find some and then sometimes you can't, but it doesn't hurt to Google it and see what pops up. You might find one that's 15% off or you might find one that's free shipping or something like that, but any little bit helps. So always Google and see if you can find a coupon code. Number 12, um, vehicles. We buy used ones if at all possible, if we can find one that we feel is reliable, that we feel um, suits our needs and that we can afford, then we will get a used vehicle. So we're actually in the market here pretty soon for me, a new, new to me SUV, but we're gonna look for a used one. We're not gonna go buy one brand new. Um, number 13, also with to do with the cars, is the wear and tear on the vehicles. Um, like I said, we're getting ready to leave town tomorrow after worship, and Jason's already gone and gotten an oil change, and the tires rotated, and things like that. So as long as you're keeping up with regular maintenance, it prevents anything bad from happening to the uh, engine, if at all possible, and it, rem it keeps the wear and tear even on the tires, to where you're not having to buy brand new ones as often. Also pertaining to vehicles, um, number what 14 is gas. Um, we try to use um, the Kroger card as much as possible. Our Kroger, you can earn fuel points, and I know there's a lot of Krogers a lot across the nation. If you have the Kroger card, and I actually have a hack video on how to get the fuel points at Kroger and save like a dollar off. I will link that video below as well. That is very helpful. I know also there is Walmart 
offers discounts. I think it's like Walmart Plus offers discounts. Um, Sam's, you can usually get good good prices on gas at Sam's Club. Um, and then there is the Gas Buddy app that you can just pull it up on your app and it, it tell it to find your location and it tells you all the gas stations within so many miles of you and what their prices are and they are accurate i test it all the time so you can just check who has the cheapest gas before you just be like oh well we need to pull in right here and it might be 450 but if you go down a mile then it might be 420. So, you know, you can kind of judge and, and try to help save a little bit here and there using the Gas Buddy app. There's also another app that I've downloaded it, but I haven't used it yet. It's called Get Upside. I don't know how, exactly how it works. I think you can get cash back, like you get paid back money where, when you fill up. I'm not exactly sure, but if you have it, let me know if you like it, if you use it. I've downloaded it, I just haven't used it yet. Also, to save gas, I try to run all my errands on the same day um, and I try to do it in a straight line if at all possible or a circle if it's spread out so that I'm not running here there here 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 there here there I try to hit it like in one big circle and go back out or in and straight back out if they're all in a row just to save on gas and I try to do it one time on one day do you do it all in one trip instead of I go in Monday and then I go back Tuesday and then I go back Thursday and then I'm going back Friday and it's multiple trips because we live it's a good 30 45 minute drive depending on where you're going into town into the big town from where we live so then number 15 are the store rewards program I told you a little bit about the Kroger app that you can earn fuel points on they also have like digital coupons that you can take advantage of to help uh, load those to your your Kroger card and you can get those. They also do um, cash back now. I'm not sure how that works. I haven't really used it. So, but they do offer cash back. The Target app also has, you know, their circle offers, which are basically like digital coupons. They also have circle earnings. Um, so every time you shop at Target and you scan that barcode on the app, then it's going to put money on the on your little Target card and you can save it up, save it up, save it up. Or you can tell it to apply those circle earnings to whatever it is that you're buying right then. Um, and then they have their red card too, where you can sign up for their red card and it's basically your debit card. It links to your bank account. Uh, and then instead of using your debit card to pay, you use the red card to pay and it's 5% off. You get a 5% discount that way. Um, then there's the Michaels um, app. They have coupons on there. And then if you're a teacher, and yes, it counts for homeschoolers as well, you get a discount at Michaels. And then the Joann's app has coupons on their app. And then the Hobby Lobby, they used to have that 40% coupon that's once you can use it once a day um they don't have it you know a lot of people know they took that off but you can still use their app and check their weekly ad to see what it is that you're looking for if it's on sale that week before you make a trip to Hobby Lobby and purchase it now I use also the Ibotta app a lot of you know what that one is it's like a cash back app if you don't have an Ibotta I have a referral code I'll put it in the description and if you sign up it'll give you so many dollars I think you get a ten dollar bonus they just put ten dollars right there on your Ibotta account and once you scan your first receipt it's just where you add um offers to your Ibotta for each store for like Kroger, Walmart, Sam's, you know, Dollar General, whatever the different stores are, you add the offers that you're gonna buy those items at that store and then you scan your receipt and you get, it might say 10 cents back on strawberries or it might say 50 cents back on a two liter Coca-Cola or whatever the offer is. And if you know you're gonna go buy that two liter Coca-Cola, you go into Kroger and you add that offer to the Kroger and then you go buy it and you scan your receipt and they're going to put 50 cents in your Ibotta account. And then later you can either tell them you want the cash and they'll give it to you like in your bank account or on a gift card or however you want to redeem it. So it's kind of like saving money and just put 10 cents here, a dollar here, 50 cents here. That's how Ibotta works and then you can get it later. And then my favorite, favorite, favorite app is the Fetch Rewards app. It's awesome. I may have talked about it in my last um, 20 Ways We Save video. I'm not sure. 
It also has a referral code. I will put it in the description as well. And, but instead of earning money back, you earn points. So there may be points for specific items, but there's always every single receipt that you scan, you're getting 25 points minimum. And then if there are things that you bought that are part of that um, promotion, you'll earn extra points based on whatever that is. So it can be any receipt. It can be where you ordered pizza. It can be um, the little mom and pop shop restaurant around the corner. It could be a gas. So if you get gas and it says, do you want a receipt? Yes, you want a receipt. Tell it to print your receipt, scan it. You're going to get at least 25 points. Every single receipt. I've even scanned a receipt from when we've taken Willow to the vet, the veterinarian's office, and they gave me a receipt when I check out. I scan that and that gets me points. It doesn't have to be like Abata where you have to go in and it's only certain items or only certain things. It's every single receipt. And then you earn points. And so once you get up to like 25,000 points, you're eligible for a $25 gift card. And you get to choose the gift card to wherever it is. 50,000 points, you can get a $50 gift card and so on and so on and so on. So it also has um, a promotion going on right now with the referral code. I think it's it's either 2,000 or 4,000 points they'll put on your fetch rewards the first time you put your receipt, scan your first receipt um, if you put that code in. So look in there and get that. That was the cashback apps actually. So that the fetch rewards and the Ibotta are the um, cashback apps. So that was actually tip number 16, sorry. And then the last tip, 17, is kind of an obvious one, but I don't think I talked about it in the other video, and that is paper coupons. Paper coupons. If you have them and they apply to what you're buying, use them. I have a whole stash. Love them. So yeah, all these paper coupons. I clip a paper coupon. If I don't want it, somebody might. Whether that's the item itself or the coupon. The little bitty ones that come on like like this came off of American cheese. You might have seen in the grocery haul. I grabbed them. So save them. Use them. They'll save you a lot. They really add up. Every little bit adds up. All right. So now that was the last thing. Here's the challenge for you. I started doing this and it's really, really opened my eyes to how much effort that I've been putting into it, how that has really helped me. I have started keeping in my, this is my um, meal planner, and I started keeping a log of the date, the store, what I saved, how much money I saved, and then I draw a line and at the end of the month and start. So this is April and this is May. So in April, I saved us $329.06. So I started doing this and I'm going to keep going. I started it and that was April 7th that I started. So it really wasn't the first of April. So I'm going to keep going in December 31st. I'm going to add it, you know, I'll add it up each month and I'm going to see what have I saved. And then I want to see next year how much I save for the whole 12 months so I challenge you to do that as well grab a notebook something where you can keep track of everything write down how much you saved at each store and keep a log and then add it up and surprise yourself just see just see how much it is worth the effort I promise it's worth it you can do it I believe in you that's the end of this video. I'm going to go get us finished, ready to go. We have early morning. Get up. We're going to go worship. And as soon as worship is over with, we are hitting the road. So I will take you along for that. Stay tuned for that video. And I'm going to tell you good night for now. And I love you. And God loves you. And there's nothing you can do to change that. Thanks for watching. Bye.